Disney has yet another problem on their hands ahead of the release of their live action Snow White remake. Unfortunately, someone in Ukraine leaked like the entire trailer and you would think this studio would get ahead of the problem by just releasing it on their own the way that GTA did. They had to release their trailer because someone leaked it online outside of their permissions. But Disney has not gotten ahead of the problem, and now this trailer is just spreading everywhere on Twitter, on YouTube. We unfortunately cannot show it on the show because we don't want to get sued. We don't want any trouble. But we watched through it and uh, off air, and we're going to show you some stills just to illustrate how badly they color graded and lit this film. It's the it's same thing I was talking about Completely soulless. It's the same exact discourse that was going around about Wicked. It just looks soulless, especially granted that this is supposed to be a magical fairy tale. Did you see that there was somebody who like made a tweet that said, like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And somebody said, POV, you've never seen anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're blind and you just got cured. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some of some these, of these okay. stills from the movie. Here's one. Hold on. And there we go. That was in the opening scene. Okay. There's Gal Gadot as the evil queen. Look, again, I, I'm fine with the actual color choices they're making here, but a little bit more vibrancy would go a long way. I don't know how I feel about them giving her drag queen makeup as the evil queen, but she, I don't know, she had pretty crazy makeup in the animated version. Here's a, I like this one. There's Gal emoting. Gal is giving Rachel Zegler a very evil smile. Yes, she is. In this one, by candlelight. Rachel Zegler trying not to look evil. She's like trying to catch a mm -hmm. butterfly in that one, I guess. Those are the CGI dwarves all lined up. All lined up. In the darkness, once again, mm -hmm. completely in the dark because they had to rush this. Again, it She's all there looks very... with a lantern in front of all the dwarves. Again, um, why is there not some better key lighting and some vibrancy to the background? I'm not saying that it has to glow, but I'm saying that it looks like it wasn't lit anywhere but in the foreground. I mean, isn't that just because they're trying to get away with CGI mistakes? I mean, that's, that's the general idea with these because things. Because they right? had to it's... do CGI dwarves last minute. Yeah. Like, it was definitely a last minute hodgepodge there she is looking at the dwarves giving them a speech or something and that just reeks of uh handmaid's tale C and cgi <laughs> well no it's a, I mean, no cgi just no but uh, she's wearing a red cloak and it kind of reminded me of that is all um there's another still of rachel zegler again, this is a shot where i see tons of potential mm -hmm. in in how it could have been better lit yeah she's like catching a firefly in this one she you knows she doesn't look bad the hairstyle just wasn't yes. it um, there's another I, one of Gal Gadot. This is them just going out of their way to make sure that Gal Gadot didn't look more beautiful. What do you mean? Well, she, like, uh, how so? It's just, it just, it's lit badly. It's colored badly. It's graded badly, and they've. It looks like they've, uh, like, the way that it forms the shape of her head. She looks like an egg. Yeah. It they also like tell me what that crown is because that looks like a dunce cap to me. Okay. That crown looks ridiculous. All right. So, look, I want to know your thoughts on the trailer in general. I mean, I noticed that some of the songs were completely new and originally made for this movie, mm -hmm. not not derived from the animated musical. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics to those songs were about becoming the girl that she knows she can be or whatever she was talking about at D23. Well, I did like that they were talking about how uh, she talks about taking back our kingdom. They're like, oh, look, she's a socialist hero. Mm -hmm. She's going to she's going to take back the kingdom for the people. You can tell that they're kind of making Snow White into a bootleg Joan of Arc, I guess. It's a 20 then. Um, she's becoming the leader that she knows she can be and that her late father told her she could be. Da, 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 da. Ruben the Imitator said, Oh, Mary, Sir Lawrence Olivier, a dearly respected white English actor, played Othello, the Moor in Othello by William Shakespeare. Moors are a black tribe indi indigenous to North Africa. I was under the impression that North Africa had different skin tones to sub-Saharan Africa, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, but yeah, so I saw the trailer and the first thing I thought was, it was kind of the same way that I felt 
when Wish, tr when the Wish trailer came out and then was then proven correct when Wish the movie was actually out and we saw it, which was that right. nothing that really comes from Disney these days. Again, this is just my opinion and this could be something that you may see it vastly different than me. It's all a matter of perspective. That's fine. None of it feels like it comes from the mind of a single person who wants to make something creative anymore. Even the remakes, uh, in the remakes, you can kind of understand that a remake is supposed to be adapting something very specific. But even Wish, which was its own original tale, felt like everything came off of a factory assembly line and it was devoid of an artistic expression that spoke to an audience because it didn't feel like the artistic expression of one person or a small group of people. It felt like a bunch of executives got into a room and gave orders to some creatives who were then handcuffed by the process of filmmaking at the company and what comes out feels lifeless and soulless and devoid of any actual introspection on the material. Uh, Wish was yet another Disney princess story they came up with where she has no love interest yeah. in the film. Well, as we know, Disney doesn't like doing that anyways anymore. Even in Little Mermaid, it felt begrudging. Yeah, we got the hint that they're extremely downplaying Snow White's love story in this version of it. Unless things have changed since Rachel Zegler said that. Again, you can't... But they we did show her... I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. It, it, Jonathan was the yeah. actor's name. Yeah. They showed the the prince in this trailer. Um, so maybe they they kind of went back on that and I mean, rewrote that the been, story. The to... best thing that they could have done would have been to just incorporate more of the romance into it. And I think a lot of people that would have spoken to them. I mean, if you can go back and add CGI dwarves to like yeah. all of the scenes in the movie... You can certainly go back and make sure that there is a love story in the movie. Yeah. And and I think that even if you even if you make the rest of the changes, even if you change all of the rest of the story around her and the and the evil queen, just the fact that they'd be willing to lean into the romance would feel mm -hmm. so opposite of everything She's Disney's not doing these dreaming days. Dreaming of being yeah. saved by the prince. She's okay. not dreaming of true love, Brett. I would be more She's dreaming of things that are more important than love. I would be more like political power. <laughs> like political power. <laughs> like I would be more interested to know like if there's any yay. ladies Snow White is Hillary Clinton. <laughs> if there's oh, oh if there are any ladies in the chat, I don't know how many women watch this show live, but I can't pretend to feel like I'm heavily connected to the material. I'm not. It doesn't really, really matter to me. But it would be interesting to know who, if anyone in the audience who is a girl who did grow up loving Disney princess stories and does, you know, cherish those stories about finding love and romance, what they think of that idea of what changes could have been made to it. Because I can't bring myself to pretend to be outraged other than the fact that it looks like slop. It looks like CGI slop. Yeah. But I get it. Right? One thing I know for a fact will be removed from the live action remake that was in the animated movie is any portrayal of Snow White praying. I yeah. remember this. I watched the animated movie not too long ago just to be sure I knew what I was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, comparing it to the live action when that comes out. And they portrayed Snow White praying at her bedside kneeling down and, and praying for the dwarves and um i thought that was really beautiful and very innocent and it comes from such a different time in the culture like winnie they, the pooh carrying a gun right exactly yeah. like they certainly will not portray anything like that and it just seems like the more people see of rachel zegler as snow white the less they want to watch this movie mm -hmm. it's not convincing them it's actually deterring them from watching the movie and this kind of blossomed into a larger conversation about how Hollywood can't seem to get casting Snow White correct. Every time they try, it's a disappointment. And obviously, Rachel Zegler is one of those examples. But also Jennifer Goodwin from Once Upon a Time playing Snow White. And also, controversially, Kristen Stewart from Snow White and the Huntsman, which was not a Disney movie. Yes. Rather, based on the original fairy tale... I thought that Snow White and the Huntsman was pretty good, and I thought that Kristen Stewart was not a bad choice for that. I didn't know that there was a 2001 Hallmark Snow White starring Kristen Kruick. 
Uh, I love Kristen Kruick. She's in uh, Murder in a Small Town, which I'm watching right now. She's been in all sorts of things, like Smallville, that I really, really like. So they've made their stabs at this over the years, of course. Uh, I like Jennifer Goodwin in Once Upon a Time. And I, I actually would encourage, if anybody wants to watch... Um, especially those early seasons of Once Upon a Time, maybe the last thing time you'll ever get to see that type of those types of stories done with more love than what you see now mm -hmm. would be to go back and rewatch those. Yeah, I think uh, also I realized you need to strike a balance between Rachel Zegler's attitude about Snow White yeah. and Ariana Grande's attitude about Wicked. Mm. Like it doesn't. The IP that you're being invited into doesn't need to be your entire freaking religion. Like, your entire personality. You don't need to cry every time that it's mentioned. Um, <laughs> you don't need to be, like, performatively just this overwrought, like, m complete outburst of emotion about mm -hmm. it. But also, you shouldn't say negative things about it. So find a middle, it find a middle outdated, group. calling it scary, saying you didn't like it, mm -hmm. you know... Try to find a middle ground if you can. I think the best thing they could have done after the initial backlash would have been to embrace the storyline with the prince and cast real um, little people. Well, yeah, I mean, would that have taken less time than yeah, what they ended up I think doing? I think, I think uh, don't use CGI dwarves. Mm -hmm. and in and increase the storyline with the prince and then everything else can be exactly as you did it you can do all the girl bossing you want as long as she's a girl boss that falls in love and then you get the best of both worlds snow white in the animated movie didn't do shit for the kingdom okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember that being a part of the story at all yeah. so i'm already not excited to see this Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.